believers. South Korea markets have collapsed. Jamie Dimon from J.P. Morgan Chase just made a statement that said, if you borrow money to buy Bitcoin, you are a fool. And the mooch, Anthony Scaramucci, has said, the institutions are not there yet to create the crypto boom. So what does that mean for us as a community? Well, we're going to find out today. It's not financial advice, but I am always right. I'm married to the music like more to be on bricks. Even my lady call herself a side chick. I'm popping up like over red and back around the flame. Conscious. All right, guys, we're going to start with Queen Gecko because that's how we start every day. We're at one point nine six trillion dollars on trading volume of one hundred and fifteen billion dollars, which puts us down about ten billion dollars in traffic over a 24 hour period. And that appears to be a large uh, drop in volume from the South Korean markets because all of the crypto exchanges, except four, are now no longer able to trade crypto. There's 37 that were shut down. There's 29 that will survive. But of those 29, 25 of them did not qualify for trading under the new rules. So things are slowing down in South Korea. It's going to take a few days, I'm sure, for people to get into compliance to figure out what it is exactly that the South Korean government wants. And that's probably going to cause a little ripple in this market, but not the XRP ripple, because that's another story in itself. So Bitcoin's trading at 42166 It was looking real good, around $44,000 at a point yesterday. Uh, Ethereum had approached $3,100 yesterday uh, before settling back down to $2,940. Uh, Cardano Cardano is not having the week that it expected to have. And if you go check investor sentiment right there, it is just not there right now. Um, also, yesterday, Cardano was the third-ranked crypto, and now Tether is the third-ranked crypto. So you know what's going on. People are putting their money into Tether for some reason. But there's a lot of green in the last hour in the market. It doesn't mean we're done, but it means that things have changed just a little bit. Uh, if you look, you can see Uniswap being way up. Uh, and if you were wondering why Uniswap is way up, it's because they secured $200 million in funding. All of the blockchains, Avalanche, Luna, Uniswap, they're all starting to have their moment. I think the best thing that we can say about that and what it means is uh, Tezos is finally getting up there, even though it had a bad overall day. Uh, it's getting back there. But these new blockchains are surpassing the capabilities of Ethereum already. Uh, these new blockchains are probably going to be more refined than whatever it is Bitcoin is working on. So... Things are changing rapidly in the uh, crypto market. Uh, dominance for Bitcoin is at 40.6. Ethereum, 17.7. Gwei is finally down to a reasonably, to a reasonable level. Let's just call it that. Moving on. All right, guys. So the top story right now. Trading volumes collapse at most South Korean ex crypto exchanges. New restrictions have been confirmed. And trading volumes are shrinking at South Korean crypto platforms where it has now also become illegal for the staff and executives of crypto exchanges to trade on their employees' platforms. As previously reported, the vast majority of crypto trading platforms in the country have either closed down or removed fiat trading in the last few days in order to comply with regulators' new operating permits. The firm that chose to stay open around the fiat KRW markets appear to have paid a huge price. The Chosen Ilbo reported that in the case of Flybit, a 24-hour trading volume shrank from USD 97.4 million on September 24 to just USD 5.8 million dollars on September 26, and we're down a whopping 99% from September 8 figures of 692 million dollars. That is an enormous amount of money in the crypto space that is being um, suppressed by yet another government trying to impose themselves into a crypto space in which they, like every other place, wants to control. So if you're wondering why we're not at that sending moment yet, 
and we seem to be treading water every single day, even when it's just feeling like uh, there's any moment now everything will explode. The reason is because people are getting tired. They're getting worn down by the fact that uh, your greedy governments want their piece of everybody's wallets. Now, when I say greedy, and if your response in your brain was to defend uh, the government getting into it because you want it to be, um, because you want to make sure that everybody pays their fair share of taxes, everybody pays their fair share already. What we're talking about here is the governments of the world, they don't want you to pay taxes when you cash out. Currently, if you cash out a million dollars in America, your capital gains is in the neighborhood of 37%. That's not what they want. They want the capital gains when you make a trade. So if you make a trade and you're doing, uh, you're doing well, then they want their capital gains every single quarter from you. That's what they're looking for. So they want their money off the top before you even cash out. Because what they're trying to do is turn crypto into actual currency for the purpose of taxation. So that's where you are. That's why people are nervous. And that's what's going on. But uh, moving on. Wondering what dog shit looks like when it takes human form, look no further than Jamie Dimon who yesterday said, if you borrow money to buy Bitcoin, you're a fool. Jamie Dimon, CEO of one of the biggest financial institutions of the world, JP Morgan, has once again let the world know about his stance on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Dimon stated that whoever borrowed money to purchase Bitcoin was, in his opinion, a fool. However, his personal opinion has not clashed with the fact that JP Morgan is now offering access to six cryptocurrency funds for its customers and even created its own digital ledger token for payments called the JPM coin. So this is why you can't trust anybody in banking and why you can't trust anybody in government. These guys will stab you in the back while they sell you the knife. Uh, JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon blasted crypto and Bitcoin yet again. He argued that the real value of cryptocurrency and his take on the cryptocurrency world in an interview with the Times of India last week stated that the latest bull market in cryptocurrency was created by a lot of liquidity in the system, which then leads to speculation, Diamond declared. I'm not a buyer of Bitcoin. I think if you borrow money to buy Bitcoin, you're a fool. However, Diamond also acknowledged there's the possibility the cryptocurrency sector could increase its value tenfold in the next years. The value of everything is created by the appearance. There is plenty of gold in the world. But the perceived lack of gold is why it has enormous store of value. And it's the same thing for a lot of commodities that are held long term. The, the value is what we decide it to be. So the rules that Jamie Dimon lives the entire trading life for JP Morgan of only applies when he wants it to apply. Because I can tell you right now, this piece of shit has plenty of gold in store. That's the kind of hypocrites that you're dealing with when you're trying to get everything going in the cryptocurrency space and you're trying to get mass adoption. They're mass adopting, they're bitching about it, and then they're saying that the thing that they're doing isn't the thing that they're doing. It's the way it works. Welcome to America. Moving on. I'm not sure who said it, but I think Stone Cold made it famous at some point. DTA, don't trust anybody. But if there's one person that you might want to listen to, it's Skybridge Capital's Anthony Scaramucci. The institutions are not there. When you have a conversation with Anthony Scaramucci, he is a proponent of cryptocurrency and all forms of digital currency. He believes that they are the future. He has adopted them as the future, and he's done everything in his power to project a positive sentiment. But he is also pragmatic and he will give you his honest assessment. It doesn't mean that he's always right, 
because he's giving you his assessment of something. Anthony Scaramucci, CEO of Skybridge Capital, a multi-asset class investment firm, says he thinks the institutional investment boom in cryptocurrency has been greatly exaggerated. In an interview given to Bloomberg last week, Scaramucci stated that most institutions are still not interested in cryptocurrency as an investment and that only 10% are actively investing in crypto. And what he's saying is that the biggest companies are probably in, the biggest banks are probably in, the opportunity is there for those large companies who can afford the risk <clears throat> to get that sort of reward, but people are still nervous about uh, mass adoption in the cryptocurrency space at the institutional level. Now, you should think back to what's going on in the market and when you see manipulation in the market, uh, knowing, in fact, that the place that banned uh, cryptocurrency a couple days ago is also the second largest holder in the world of Bitcoin, should give you chills because... Even in a small market like we really live in, the cryptocurrency, uh, there is a lot of manipulation. There is a lot of sentiment that goes contrary to everything that we want to see happening. So when the mooch says there's a long way until Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are embraced by institutional investors, then he means it. The institutions are not there. Anybody who's telling you there's institutional adoption into this space is not being totally honest or they're seeing something that I'm not seeing. And I guess what he's tr trying to tell everybody is that for every time you hear the article that Tesla is into Bitcoin or that Michael Saylor uh, has bought more Bitcoin, those are small companies in the big scheme of things. That's not mass adoption. That's just a couple of companies that have bought it. And he is in tune with a lot of different companies. And what they are saying is they're not yet ready. And that doesn't mean that it's not coming. But as of yet, we're looking at a small number of institutional companies uh, that are investing into the market. When we see it, you're going to know because everything is going to get incredible. And it will happen very, very quickly. But as of right now, Consider yourself lucky that the institutions have not taken control. On the other hand, when they do, the price of everything is going to skyrocket. So, six of one, half dozen of the other. Moving on. All right, guys, Keanu is trading at 77.37. That's down about 12% to the previous day. Still a micro market cap. If a couple of investors just walked right in, they could turn it into 500 million and make 150 x in very short order it's crazy to think that it's at that spot or at that level but when you start to look across the market at the difficulties that everybody's having first of all ethereum prices have rocketed up one more time because there's a massive sell-off there's a massive uh, hold into tether a lot of activities going on a lot of things are happening and not enough people have transferred off of the chain and gone on to another chain. But one of the things to look forward to for the Keanu universe is the NFT marketplace, which is being finished right now, uh, which you're going to see in very short order. Uh, NFTs are a very cool thing, very new thing. Uh, I would just like to point out, by the way, that there's a donation wallet down below. And if you have any NFTs, you can send them to me, even if they're the, the bad ones, because I don't have any. We're also working on uh, a lot of charity angles. The Starlight Project will be finished this week, and we will then be able to see the finished product that is available for, uh, I believe it's the New Orleans Hospital. Crystal will correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I believe it was called uh, New Orleans Memorial Hospital. But that's where the, the big donation went, and when we see it, I'm sure it's going to look beautiful and it's going to be awesome. So get on the train. And remember, when you see guys like this that are selling 0.1 ETH, remember, there are also people that are in chat trying to give you advice on how to invest. And if that's what they're doing, um, you are taking your advice from the wrong people. Hold. Don't sell. Moving on. All right, you see that spike right there? HawkFi is up 6.3% in the 24-hour window. And you can see there was a little dip, and then it shot right back up. Why is that? Well, from Mike Howard, AMA coordinator, the relaunch 
frequently asked questions, and I'm going to start reading a little bit to you right here. When relaunch, we expect the relaunch around two to four weeks, but sooner if we can. Uh, I hold my coins on the exchange. What should I do? In order to migrate, you will need to transfer your coins to a personal wallet via Trust or MetaMask when or any other ERC-20 supported. When the dev team is ready, we will announce the migration wallet address here in Telegram. What about the fees? Fees are out of our control, unfortunately. However, fees to transfer to a wallet are less than a buy or sell fee. We will endeavor to let you know the cheapest time to transfer where possible. What if I don't want to migrate? After relaunch, the current ETH contract will be obsolete, and so will the coins on it. This is why we, we're informing you now, so you have the choice to sell and buy back again after relaunch or hold in wallet to be part of the migration. <clears throat> And the question for it all is, why is there a relaunch? And the answer is simple. The current ETH contract is renounced, meaning liquidity is locked, and the contract is too rigid for us to work with in order to move the project forward. This decision has been made in the best interests of the project and our investors. So what they are doing is they are modernizing their contract to make it more appropriate for the market that we are in and that is probably one of the best things they could possibly do in order to project themselves out into the future so uh, guys if you're not aboard the train you should probably get afford the uh, afford you should probably get aboard the hawk fi train because uh, they're on the up there's the market showing you that it's moving up and there's going to be a relaunch very soon and a relaunch creates enthusiasm so it would be silly not to get enthused. Moving on. All right, Sancho, you guys are trading at 1388. That's down 5%. And if you are asking yourself in your best Mr. Mackey voice, oh, for fuck's sake, what did China do this time? Well, they didn't do anything this time. It was actually South Korea. It was actually uh, Jamie Dimon from J.P. Morgan Chase. It was actually all of the institutional people who are trying to wreck you and to prevent you from prospering. Don't let them do that. If you are faithful to a product, then your opportunity and responsibility is to hold if you want generational wealth. So you sit here and you wait for these train wrecks to get out of your product so that good investors will get back in. You're looking for long-term holders, and when you get them, they're life-changing. These paper-handed hoes, they come and go. Don't worry about them. Just remember, um, they have ADD or something like that. If you can't hold, you can't, you can't create generational wealth. If you can't hold, you can't create generational wealth. If you can't hold, you can't create generational wealth. So just remember that every single time. And you remember you heard it from Keanu Bleeves. Moving on. All right, Floki Vikings. You guys are trading at 53.83. That's up 12.12% to the previous day. And it's my understanding that Saber has five announcements that are ready to go today. Are you shitting me? Five announcements are ready to go today. Listen, guys, there are plenty of tokens out here. And all of these tokens, they're just sitting back and they're waiting for something to happen. They're waiting for the market to correct. But you know what you're seeing in Floki? You're seeing active people moving forward with project after project after project after project. And what does that mean? I think what that means is five, five announcements in a row. Are you shitting me? Now, guys, let's remember one thing. Saber, Saber, <laughs> Saber is real sneaky. The last time we had an announcement and the announcements were, I believe there were three of them. And I think that what he did was make a bad announcement and he followed it up with another weak announcement before he set the world on fire. And then when he did that, all of a sudden, all you saw was up, 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 up and away. So don't fall for him. Don't fall for him. You know what he's trying to do? He's trying to shake out you paper-handed hoes. And hey, if you paper-handed hoes, if you're watching me today, you heard what I said about you paper-handed hoe. You better hold on to your bag because if you don't, you are. I don't even know a word that rhymes with stupid. You're duped. How about that? Guys, the announcement is in seven and a half hours. And I am told from inside sources that don't exist that shit's going to get real, real around that time. So if your bag is packed, 
here in a great place. If you don't have a bag packed, you better get your shit packed right now because in just a little while, you're going to have missed out. Moving on. RC Tom, a wolf pack trading at 1405. That's up another 12.8% in the 24 hour window. Saitama is just doing it and doing it and doing it well. I don't know where that comes from, but I'm sure that it's hilarious. Uh, the market cap is the diluted is $1.4 billion right now. Uh, there is, by the way, a couple of pen things that are going on right now. Um, one of them is a video um, they are going over. And uh, you know what? Let's bring this into frame. So you got billboard advertising happening right now. The Saitama interview with Chief, Oper Chief Operating Officer. There is a live Q&A that happened, and the broadcast is available for you. Go into the Telegram. But guys, I was in chat nine hours ago, and since that chat, there were 9,000 different comments. If you want to see an active community right now, look no further than Saitama, uh, because things be blowing up over there. And I don't know who Wallet6631 is, but respect. Moving on. All right, Keys, you faithful, trading at 52.33. That's down 5% on the previous day. But the good news is uh, we found the owner of the Tesla. And there is a statement from that person who, if you're wondering who it is, you go into Telegram. It's not for me to tell you who it is. But it says, as the Tesla contest winner, I had the chance to better chat with Kishu Man. I can guarantee you that he's very kind, serious, and a respectful person. Based on his certainty, I multiply all my holdings in Kishu and Tenshi because I am more convinced by the seriousness of the project. A person who keeps their commitment is not leading something doomed to failure. I saw the same respect with all the administration of the chat. Thanks to all you guys, Jax, Numero Uno, Guillermo, Robin Hood, Captain, and everyone else, you are awesome. I wanted to give this testimony to certify the veracity of the competition and the effective receipt of the prize, Kishu Tenshi to the moon. And that's pretty awesome, guys. Somebody just won a Tesla. And that's a big deal. So you saw a little drop down in price action in one hour around 9 p.m. last night. They got eaten up and then some. Those are the type of green candles that you always want to see. And that shows you that there is a lot of faith in the product right now. And it's still continuing to go. If you bought in down here at this 43, um, you are now up quite a bit of money. So uh, if you're making plays and you're making them right, then you just had one good evening. So enjoy your newfound money. Moving on. Starlink Troopers, all the hype surrounding other tokens doesn't even matter because guess what the number one traded token has been for about 24 hours right now. You guessed it, it's Starlink. So uh, guys, if you are in the product, then you've seen a little bit of drop trading at 90, uh, 99, 10 right now. That's down about 5% to the previous day. And it looks like uh, there's been a little bit of sell-off, a little bit of accumulation in the price range around 1000 And that's fine. But you see this green right here? If you're watching right now, if you're paying attention right now, and you know anything about these, uh, these green things right here, you are in a buy window. Uh, that means that there is some upcoming right now, and you might be able to make yourself a few bucks. But, but that is if you're a swing or a day trader. Um, if you are a holder, then accumulate a little bit more because right now is an opportunity. You're at a low and there's going to be a pump coming. So um, it's going to take just a little bit of time. But look at these numbers right here. You can see how much green there is in each one of the moments where you have as a buy opportunity. And during this, um, during this consolidation period, You've seen that the green bar has barely gone over, but now you are seeing it moving in the right direction. So if you're paying attention as an investor, then this is your buy opportunity and this is your buy signal that's happening right, right now. If you're not and you're like me 
and you just like space video games and stuff like that, get your money into this product. It would be crazy for you not to be involved in one of the games of the future in the metaverse, and it's going to be awesome. Don't take my word for it. Go research it yourself. Moving on. All right, guys, I don't want to get off on a rant here, but I want to explain a few things to you. Number one, your corporate overlords. Uh, number two, your government handlers. Uh, none of those people care about you or your prosperity. What they care about is the continuation of the systems by which they have implemented. So if you feel or you see that cryptocurrency is in some way under attack, then you can rest assured the reason that it is under attack is because the institutions do not like the money leaving their sector and going into another sector because they want it all. And the governments are doing the same thing. And when I say governments, I mean China. I mean South Korea. I mean at some point the United States government. Uh, they are looking for their piece of that pie. And they don't just want the pie. They want to control the oven that makes it. So uh, this is where we are. And this is the moment that's going to start mattering for you. So if you want generational wealth, it's very simple. Get into cryptocurrency and hold. There's nothing else. Get into cryptocurrency and hold. I just made it easy for you. Get into cryptocurrency and hold. It's just that simple. Once you've made your money, you can make whatever play you want going forward. But get into a product and hold, even through the bad. If you are in a product that is going up right now, rest assured, at some point it's going to go down. may not go as down as you want it, but for every up that you see and for every transformational generational wealth uh, that you see coming out of a chat, rest assured there are a hundred swing and day traders that got wrecked in order for that one person to have that transitional amount of money because that is the way this all works. Now, if we're a team and we're united and we're all working for the same cause and that is wealth. If we have a thousand people each investing a thousand dollars into a product and we have a million dollars into that product and the simple math is this, once we go find a thousand one, then we have one million and one thousand. And it continues to go and it continues to go and it continues to go. The only glitch in that matrix is when somebody sells. And those people, those are the unfaithful. If you want generational wealth, then you find a product and you hold. Then you find like-minded people to do the same. And then when those swing traders and those day traders come along, they are going to get wrecked because they are relying on you to be faithless. And you will make the money from them. They will move on unhappy. And you will now have all the money that you've ever dreamed of to do whatever it is that you wanted to do. But it takes the effort of doing nothing. Do nothing when it's good. Do nothing when it's bad. Just do nothing. And when you have transformed your life, then make a decision. But don't do it until then. That's how this works. That is how this works. So transform your life or don't. But I just gave you the blueprint. That's my time. Let's have a prosperous day, guys. I've been around since the 80s and wasn't always cool, especially with the ladies. I was a damn fool. Dad was an alcoholic. Mama, she had to leave him. Grew up around the fighting, the fussing, cussing, and cheating. That's when I started breaking all of the rules. Selling drugs and robbing people. I was kicked out of school. I was a bad kid, bad kid. Tearing shit up. Sleeping on couches with 40 bottles and cigarettes.